live from Naperville Covenant Church. As the sun's coming up over the church building, this is perfect. And by the way, it's the best Covenant Church for a lot of reasons, but um, one of them is right over there, over there, there's a Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, how great was that? What, Dunkin' Donuts right next door. Talk about where all the middle schoolers and high schoolers went running over to Dunkin' Donuts every Sunday morning. So here's my summary on church. I have been blessed. I have lucked out in my life because I've been able to experience three of the best covenant churches around. The first one, First Covenant Church, St. Paul. I mean, there's not enough words to express how that church shaped me and loved me to faith and how church is supposed to work. I'm covenant through and through being shaped by those pietistic Swedes, pastors, youth pastors, youth counselors, people's names I don't even know, but who loved me to the faith, showed me a loving God and loved me to the faith. Maybe uh, more sermons coming about that church someday because that is the church for me. And then going to Naperville Covenant Church. I didn't have a place to go, an internship. And they said, hey, Billy, would you go out and there's a place in Naperville. Where's Naperville? Well, I ended up staying here for 14 years. And those, I know, uh, Bruce Springsteen's song comes to my mind. We, some of the glory days. But magical moments here. Such good memories. And then, of course, going to Monticello. And I swore I would never be a senior pastor. I'll never be one of those old boring guys, but I was, and hopefully I, hopefully I didn't do it the old boring way. So I've had the experience of three churches that have been wonderful and beautiful, and I'm so thankful. Thank you, God, for the experiences I've had in ministry. They've been the best. I can say I've done it, been there, done that, loved it. Also some hard times in church, of course, but it's the good that outweighs the bad. So let me give you my summary. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 says this. We loved you so much that we gave you not only the gospel of God, but our very lives as well. We were delighted to give you not only the gospel of God, but our very lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. And that's one of the best summaries of church I can find. We loved you so much. It's all about love and being dear to one another. And, oh, there's so much programming that goes in on Sunday mornings and the pastor's time and volunteer time and boards and Sunday school teaching and, and the performance that goes into Sunday morning worship. It takes so much time. But all that pales in significance to what really matters most, and that is love and loving people. We loved you so much. And this is what happened for me as a child. We gave you the gospel of God, the good news about God. Why would we do that? And it didn't come necessarily through teaching and preaching, but it came through relationship because I had become so dear to those people that they shared their love with me through their life. And it brought me to faith. And here at this place, the same. And it's the people, the memories, the experiences of love, of being so dear to one another that are the best things and the best memories we had from this place, too. And then in Monticello as well, the same, sharing the gospel of God. We love you so much. We shared the gospel of God. Delighted to share it because you become so dear to us. So church is about being dear. So if you don't have a church, find one, stick with it, and learn how to love. Places we learn best how to love, maybe, are in our own families and in church. And if you do have a church, you're wondering about checking out, well, you can do that. You're free to do that. I remember uh, Pastor Paul told me here once, Bill, we're not a cult. People are free to come and go. But maybe what you need to do is stick around and practice love. We're always learning how to love, to love better and to love deeper. And to figure out, man, the church is going through a revolution, I think. It's got to change or it's going to die in some ways. And it's this revolution of love. 
sharing the gospel through loving relationships. That's it. That's what we did here, didn't we, kids? That's what happened for me at First St. Paul. That's what we tried to do in Monticello. And I'm so grateful for the experiences in all of those places. And what will last is the love and the people and the experiences we had together. So to all of you who I've been your pastor or your youth pastor or just a friend, thank you, thank you, thank you that you loved me so much and I saw the delight in you to share not only with me the good news about God, but your very lives as well. So thank you, Naperville Covenant. Until next time, may you live all the days of your life.